Today here on Bean Energy, I'm gonna go through using a Palmister charge controller here to charge an AGM battery. What settings there are available and whether it'll work for AGM. Here we go. So here we are with our charge controller plugged into the battery. The solar is currently off. We can see that our battery voltage is at 12 and a half volts. We are not sending any amperage into the battery. I wanted to run through the settings real quick showing how to properly charge an AGM battery, a, a generic AGM battery. So first we're gonna hit this program button here. The D00 is for the load output on this guy. This is the load output over here. This is a MOSFET controlled output so that you can do a low voltage disconnect within this unit, which we'll see here in a minute. We're not messing with that. This is how many hours a day it's supposed to be on, so you can set that to a different number. When we get to D01, this is gonna be your float voltage for your battery. Now, when you're looking at your AGM, you should be able to look up the specs for what the voltage should be for float. In addition to that, when you set this, you should test it with a good multimeter and make sure that when it says 13 and a half volts here, that you're actually getting 13 and a half volts at the battery. These are very inexpensive charge controllers, but with that, you don't want to trust what's on the screen. You want to verify yourself. So if you put 13 and a half here, it's really doing 13.6, then maybe you should set this at 13.4 and move on from there. D02 is going to be your bulk charging rate but it's also going to be your absorption rate. So what's gonna happen is this will have the three modes. This will have the bulk charging, the absorption, and the float. This is only going to have one setting for the bulk and the absorption. You'll see on the status screen later that there is in fact a place where it'll show whether it's in bulk versus absorption. D03 is your low voltage cutoff for that load output on this guy from earlier. It's only a five amp output and it's whatever the battery voltage is so this charge controller will work on 12 24 36 or 48 volt batteries so if you have a 48 volt battery and you're going to run something off of the load here then you're going to get 48 volts off of that terminal which is actually a you know at five amps that's actually a reasonable amount of power but there's not a whole lot of things that can be powered straight off of 48 volts so just watch out for that you're not getting a 12 that's not a 12 volt output that is a battery voltage output D04 is going to be your charging mode. 00 would be a lead acid or AGM. That's gonna have the three modes where it goes from bulk to absorption and over to float. If we go up to one here, then what that gives us is a CCCV, a constant current and then constant voltage. That's a two-step charging profile and that would be for your lithium batteries. So for this scenario, we're gonna be doing 00. zero. Uh, something else to mention is that when you go to change a setting, once it's blinking and it's, it's on the number that you want, you hold this enter button and wait for it to come back up. That's according to the manual how you're supposed to change the settings. And then once you have all of your, change, your settings inputted, I always go back to the main menu and then you're going to disconnect from the battery with your solar off because you, you, you always want to turn your solar off and then disconnect your battery from the controller. So I've disconnected the battery from the controller and I always wait a few seconds before I plug it back in. And then we're gonna plug it back in there. And now once it's booted up, the first thing I do is always go back in and check are all the settings where I put them. Everything looks like where I put it. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and turn the solar on and watch this run through the different modes going from bulk over to absorption and then to float. Something else to note is that this 18.4 Celsius is going to be the internal temperature of the charge controller. So at 40 Celsius, the fan up here in the top will kick on until that gets back down to 40 Celsius and kick back off again. So if you were to monitor, that would be something good to check. A lot of people talk about these things burning up and I haven't gotten a lot of info on the scenario around them burning up, but getting one of these, I would definitely plug it in, put it under a load, make sure when that hits 40 Celsius that the fan comes on. All right, so here we are at four. And in this case, it actually skipped seven. I know that it does typically sit at seven. This battery only has about 250 watt hours available, even down to like 11 volts. It's a very old used up battery. So it could just be that that's causing the problem. But I know that there is an absorption mode. Go ahead and run this through again. So 13.1, it, it should get all the way up to 14.6. Here we go. 
climbing right up to 14.6 and then it goes ahead and drops back down to 13.5. That's what it does. It must have some sort of a calculation of how long to stay in absorption and for whatever reason this battery it does not stay there very long. There's the end of another Bean Energy video. So that's how to use a Palmister 60 amp charge controller to charge an AGM battery and really it's the same for a lead acid. You need to make sure you look at the charge profile voltages for your battery to make sure that it is charging it correctly and also verify with a voltmeter to make sure that any charge controller you connect to your battery is in fact charging at the voltage that you told it to. Trust but verify.